Today we're going to do the adaptation, angulation, and activation it has to do with keeping the toe third of your instrument in direct contact with the tooth. So you don't have to, most of the time when I work with new students, they're, they're worried more with this kind of set middle part of the um, toe of the instrument. Really all that you're using is the toe third, like just that much. So when you go to work with your instrument, you don't have to worry about all the rest of it. You only have the toe. And I'm going to keep that toe in constant contact with the enamel of that tooth. See how I do that? I just keep that toe constantly, constantly connected to it. And I'm kind of being dramatic here using the, um, you know, facial surface of the tooth. But if you, if you start here and then you don't turn, 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 pretty soon I'm like out here in her gingiva. And then if I turn slowly, look at that. If I were subgingival, I would just be digging into her gum. So that's the difference between adaptation, staying in close, close, close contact, and uh, non-adaptation. Now some people say to me, well, are you just pointing the toe right at the tooth? I'm not. I'm using just microscopically the tiny bit, the tiny top third of that instrument. So that's the thing that's kind of hard to keep in mind. I'm also staying, I'm in the V of the hand grasp here, and um, I'm staying parallel with the long axis of the tooth. Sometimes I, I lean it a little bit so I can get the correct um, blade relationship to the tooth. But on the whole, I'm pretty straight up and down. We see a lot of incorrect adaptation when you go flat on your fulcrum. And I know it looks obvious when you're doing a video like this, but it's, it's really uh, happen this really happens quite a bit where a student starts like this. And they come around. So what's wrong with that? Not perpendicular. I'm not perpendicular, which, which why, why is that a problem? You know, getting their gingiva. I'm gonna cut. I'm gonna poke them, which they're not gonna be happy gonna about. Miss. But I'm gonna miss deposit. Cause see, if I'm going like this, I might get deposit just slightly under the gingiva. But what about the patient that has a piece right here? Which you know, Marcy maybe isn't the best person to work with, cause she obviously has amazing gums, gingiva. Mm -hmm. But uh, so she doesn't have a piece there. But you really want to lead with that toe. If you're gonna get something out of a cookie jar, you're not gonna lead in there with your knuckle and try to pick something up, right? You're gonna go in with your finger and just scoop and that's what you want to think about with this instrument. You need to lead with that toe, scoop up under it, and then you need to take the, the, um, the weight of the heavier part of the instrument to push it forward. So you're not going to get under it and then scoop it out like this. You're going to get under it and then use this heavier part of the instrument to force it off the tooth. Okay, so that's adaptation. So you want to make sure your angle is correct. You can't be flat on your fulcrum. Same thing on a posterior area. As far as angulation, you want to make sure that your angle is, again, I'm keeping that toe third in touch of the tooth. See, if I'm back here and I'm like this, that toe third is going to go right into her gum. So I want to make sure that I'm connected, connected, connected at all times to the side of that tooth. And even if you have to kind of practice above the gum line, you know, if I'm here and the, the instrument's kind of sticking out into the gum line, that's going to be painful. So keep that toe third, you know, just walk it around, walk, 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 and do whatever you have to do to keep that in total contact with the tooth at all times. And then angulation is going to help keep that in contact. Because if my angle's correct as far as my stroke, I'm going to be able to stay in close contact. If I'm flat on my fulcrum and I'm not doing what I should be, then, um, then your toe isn't able to stay in close contact. Activate your instrument. You don't want to do this. Do you see what I'm doing as opposed to this? This is a rocking motion that involves moving my entire hand and my wrist. And the only fingers that are moving is these two fingers because they're twisting the instrument. Remember, when we talked about this before, you always want to think about lateral pressure and then you want to be moving the direction the toe's facing and twist. So I always say toe to the tooth, uh, go toward the toe in direction, and then twist and twist. Okay, so the only thing happening is there's like a little tiny twist here, and then you're motioning with your wrist. Don't do this. And so that happens a lot. You're not going to be able to get a piece of heavy deposit off the tooth just using finger strength. You need to be able to go laterally and toward the toe. That's going to be kind of the only thing that's going to dig into deposit and remove it effectively. 
In fact, if we're careful, we can even hear, even though Marcy doesn't have anything, you can hear my blade kind of digging. So when I go in to see if there's a piece of deposit, I do go in with such a light stroke that you could take the instrument out of my hand. So you can go in, leading with the toe, and just kind of feel for something. Once you get a piece of deposit identified, go ahead and apply. See, now you can see my grip become stronger, and I apply lateral pressure, and then actually go in for a working stroke. So there's a difference. See the difference in my hand versus this? my thumb kind of in the same neutral position. One thing that um, novitiate students do is their thumb ends up looking like this. And this isn't so bad. It kind of limits your flexibility because with a thumb like this, you can't really turn, do that twist like you should. And also you're going to have hand fatigue quite quickly if you keep your thumb like this. So that's kind of the main reason we don't like it. But you need to do that little twist. And I always kind of tease and say, you know, twer two toward the two, move toward the toe and twist and twist we kind of do that but a lot of times students forget that twist they just kind of move in and that that doesn't keep the toe against the tooth if you don't twist then your your toe is going to be out in the gingiva but the twist also helps to make the blade grip into the side of the tooth and against the deposit so if you're if your thumbs like this then you're not able to do that twist the other thing is that you might be able to keep your, your, your thumb this way, but then as you turn, 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 your thumb could drop down instead of come up as you're, as you're coming around. So try to always keep your thumb out.